Well, we've shown you where the 454590 theorem comes from. Now we're going to start using it. And uh, first of all, draw the 454590 triangle using your math chart and replace the x's with 1. So you are going to, just like in similar triangles, remember how I told you, draw two separate triangles. The, that way you can set up your proportion. You're going to want to draw the 454590. And you'll get really fast at it because it's always the same one. Now, using corresponding sides, set up a proportion. It should be really easy for this one because the legs are congruent. So it doesn't really matter which leg you put with which. Cross multiply your proportion to get a simpler equation and solve. So in this example, um, I have a triangle with leg 14 and I'm trying to find the hypotenuse. By the way, some of you are going to figure out a shortcut and that's okay, but I'm not going to show it to you on here. So first of all, I have my 45, 45, 90 triangle. This is the one for the math chart. I turned it around so it's in the same orientation. Now I don't like those X's because what if I want to use X over here? That X will mean something different than this X, especially if I put the X there. All right, so I'm crossing out those annoying X's and putting ones in for them. And so I know since this is isosceles that SQ is 14. So that's pretty easy to find. And I um, cross out that bottom X, which I should have, but apparently I didn't. Let me go ahead and get it now. And I just put square root of 2 there. The next part I did here is I highlighted the corresponding sides. In this case, these are both the hypotenuse of the triangle. And then I pick another leg. Does it really matter on this one which leg I pick? Not so much because it's the same number. If I had uh, reflected it or flipped it, then you would set, still have the same numbers over there. Okay, so I set up my proportion. I did magenta to cyan is the same as magenta to cyan. And I did, oh, I'm sorry, cyan to magenta, the blue to the red, is the same as the blue to the red. So my proportions are fine, and you can double check that. Let's do that highlighter. And so you can see, let me change my colors here, ink color, and we'll go with kind of a blue for the blue side. So that's one, that's blue, that's good, and the 14's blue. And these other two are magenta, so we're fine. Go ahead and cross multiply, and I get 14 times square root of 2 equals RS times 1, which is just RS. And that's your answer. So I have both sides. SQ is 14 and RS is 14 times square root of 2. I am very happy with that answer just as it's written. I really don't want the decimal. Here in this example, we're going to find DE and EF. Oh, by the way, on that previous example, I accidentally had AB in your notes, so I've, it's fixed on my slide. So on this example, now I gave you the hypotenuse of an isosceles right triangle, and I want to find the legs. So I went ahead and did my reference triangle, and replaced all those uh, X's with 1's. Okay. Now I'm highlighting the corresponding sides. Both I have my hypotenuse on the original problem is 11. On my reference, my math chart triangle, it's square root of 2. Okay. Then I'm going to use one of the legs because I'm going to try and find the leg. I set up a proportion and I'm going to say red to blue is equal to red to blue. So I have 11 over DE. You could have used X here. I'm kind of trying to avoid it actually. Equals square root of 2 over 1. So 11 over this equals square root of 2 over 1. Go ahead and cross multiply. Now you're going to get DE times square root of 2. That's okay. You can divide both sides by square root of 2. So your answer is 11 over square root of 2. And it's going to be the same for both uh, legs because the legs are congruent. So this brings up an interesting topic called rationalizing the denominator. In this answer, my square root of 2 is in the denominator. Uh, square roots are considered irrational numbers. And math teachers do not like uh, square roots in the denominator. And there's some good reason for that. You're not going to run into it so much in geometry as in higher level math. So you can have irrational numbers in your answers, just don't have them in the, uh, the denominator. The way we fix it is if I have a square root of 2 in the denominator, I want to multiply it by a square root of 2. Because what's square root of 2 times square root of 2? 
that's square root of 4, which is 2. I got to get rid of the square root. But if I do that to the denominator, then I have to do it to the numerator. So whatever square root you have in the denominator, you're going to go, say, square root is 17. If that's in the denominator, then you're going to multiply it by square root of 17 on bottom and on top. So that will become 17 on the denominator, and your square root moves essentially to the numerator. So let's do a quick example. I'm going to rationalize our last answer. So I multiply by that square root of 2 over square root of 2. Well, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, which is 2. Now my square root is in the numerator, not the denominator, and I'm very happy. So this is called rationalizing the denominator. So for further reflection, what is a good way to change the reference triangle on the math chart so it is easier to use? I don't like the x's. You can use it, and they're actually really handy if you figure out that shortcut. But uh, if you're just trying to use your proportion and keep everything straight, I'm not real fond of the x's. Have you noticed a shortcut to the dimensions without having to create a proportion? That's what I was just talking about. Then in that case, those x's might come in handy. How do you get square roots out of the denominator? Hopefully you'll answer that as you're going to rationalize it, which means multiply by square root over square root. And so your square root effectively moves to the numerator, and you have a regular rational number in the denominator.